Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here. Oftentimes when we build a car audio system that features a subwoofer, we will face the subwoofer away from the listening position. In fact, we can just about face the subwoofer any direction within the vehicle and get good results. This is because the frequencies of sound that a subwoofer plays have very long wavelengths and are not very directional. But there can still be differences from one location and orientation to another within the vehicle. So how can we test different locations and orientations of the subwoofer within the vehicle to make sure that we get the best bass output? That's coming up. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Here on this channel, I do reviews, I do project builds, and I do tutorial videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now in one of the previous videos, I've shown you guys how I built a test subwoofer box that I'm gonna be using in the Jeep build that I'm working on right now. The test subwoofer box is actually a sealed enclosure, and because of the way I built it, I can actually test all sorts of different orientations, including down firing. Now, if you've been following along with the build, you know that I plan on actually installing the subwoofer in a down firing type orientation right above the amplifiers. But I wanna double check that this location is gonna sound good. Because the box that I ultimately plan to install is gonna have a lot of involved fabrication and custom work, I really wanna test that location to make sure it's gonna sound good before I go all out. So by using this simple test box, I'll be able to test that location and then I can actually use the test box in the future on other builds. So let's head on over to the shop and get to testing. To get started, I'm gonna connect the subwoofer speaker wires to the amplifier. This is just a test, so I don't need to worry about the path that the wiring will actually run. So I can close the lid up above the amplifiers and processor here, and then position my test subwoofer box in place. One of the most important things when you're setting up to do a test is to make sure that your test conditions are consistent. I make sure that all doors are closed, all seats are in the same position, and I even check the radio to make sure all the settings are exactly the same, including the volume. To take these measurements, I'm going to be using this Dayton USB microphone, and I'll drop a link down in the video description so that you guys can get the same one. I like this microphone because it's relatively cheap and it works well with the software that I'm going to be using to take these measurements that I'll show you guys in a second. Next, I take the microphone and place it at the approximate listening position. The last connection I need to make is using this 3.5mm male-to-male audio cable. I'll connect this to the output of my laptop and I'll connect the other end to the input of the radio. I recommend getting a nice long cable so that you can set up everything outside of the vehicle. The software I'll be using for this is called REW, which is short for Room Equalization Wizard. This software has a ton of functionality, but right now I'll just be using the measure function. Once I hit measure, I can tell the program what I want it to do. And basically I'm going to tell it to play a sine sweep from 20 hertz all the way up to 80 hertz, which are bass frequencies. When I'm ready, I'll hit start measuring and it's gonna run two different sweeps and then average the results from those two sweeps. You also have the ability to change how many times it will run a sweep for that average. Once the measurement is complete, it will display our results. Now before we continue with the test, I just want to give you guys a quick little sample of what these sweeps sound like. After the measurement is performed, I name that measurement so I can compare it against the other measurements later. With the first measurement complete, I go back to the back of the vehicle and flip the subwoofer facing forward this time. Over at the computer, I once again start a measurement, and this time, once the measurement's complete, you can see that the color is similar to my first measurement, so in this case, I'm going to actually change the color of the curve. I also once again rename the measurement, and all this stuff is really important to do because sometimes when I'm tuning using this program, it will be common for me to actually have upwards of 20 to 30 different graphs, so you really want to make sure you're keeping track of what's what. Next up, I face the subwoofer to the rear, rerun another measurement, 
And then finally, I face the subwoofer in its down firing orientation and run one more measurement. Now what's interesting here is I'm actually getting fairly similar results between all of these different orientations. This is probably because the subwoofer is in the relatively same position for each of these measurements and because this vehicle has a relatively small cabin volume. So to switch things up a little bit more and see if we can inspire a little bit more of a change, I'm actually going to change the orientation and location of the subwoofer box. I ran another measurement and then just for the heck of it, I figured why not try out the other side as well and run another measurement. Let's take a look and compare all of the results. If I right click and select clear selections, I can clear out all of the graphs and then select two that I want to compare. I'm going to compare everything against the downfire position because I want to see if anything is better. So starting with the downfire versus the subwoofer facing up position, you can see that generally the downfiring position has slightly more output throughout this frequency range. When we compare the downfire against the firing forward orientation, this is also the same case as well as when we compare down firing against firing backwards. Here's where we start to obtain some interesting results, and that's when we compare the down fire against the side firing pointing to the right. In this comparison, you can see that the side firing actually has slightly more output in the lower frequencies, but once it gets above about 60 hertz, it actually drops off faster than the down firing. When we take a look at the data for the measurement of the subwoofer facing to the left, once again we have slightly more output over the downfiring enclosure, up to about 60 hertz, and then it stays the same. So although the side firing position actually had a little bit better performance, I don't think it's really going to work out for me because I wouldn't be able to have the subwoofer there and be able to easily still flip the back seat up and down. And even though there was a small improvement in performance, it was a very small improvement and honestly you would be hard pressed to really hear the difference. This decision is an important lesson to learn because a lot of times when we're doing a car audio install it's all about trade-offs. As an example, you might want a ton of bass output in your car but you might not be willing to give up storage space. So in that case, storage space might be more important to you, so you're not gonna build a huge subwoofer box, you're gonna build a smaller box. Whereas if you did want the most output you could possibly get, you would completely fill up that whole space. You might have multiple subwoofers, but you're not gonna have any storage room within your vehicle anymore. Again, it's all about trade-offs, and in this case, that small amount of increased performance is not worth it for me. I'd rather do the down firing as I originally planned. So guys, this leads into the question of the episode. What is the most important goal to you when you build a system? Is it SPL? Is it sound quality? Is it the way that the system looks? Or is it having a seamless integration into the vehicle that you basically can't even tell just by looking that you've installed a new system? Or maybe it's even a combination of those different things. I always like getting your feedback and it's good to talk with you guys down in the comments, so let me know down below. If you haven't seen my other Jeep build videos yet, be sure to check them out. You can see the full playlist here on screen. If you're new here and you found this video interesting, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jose, Eddie, Brian, Ali, Corey, EJ, Emmanuel, Roy Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you to them for making these videos possible, and as always guys, thank you to everyone for watching.